Hello and welcome back to Madeline and Penelope Capital. Today we're talking UiPath, ticker symbol P-A-T-H. As a disclaimer, this is not investment advice. This is just a research video that I put together meant to be educational as well as entertaining. We're going to take a look at a few different news clippings and articles surrounding the company and then we're going to jump into the charts. Thank you for your time. Please continue to like, share, subscribe. Please enjoy. This is a robot. This is a robot. And this is a robot. Robots take the tasks that can be performed by people and make them more reliable and efficient through automation. UiPath makes software robots, and through Robotic Process Automation, or RPA, people can use these robots to be more productive, more engaging, more human. Let's walk through a quick use case to see a software robot in action. The UiPath Assistant sits on an employee's desktop and is loaded with automations to improve personal productivity, create departmental efficiency, as well as streamline company-wide operations. In this example, I'm a wealth manager and I'm preparing my weekly portfolio updates for my customers. When it's time to perform my customer prospecting, a reminder pops up and prompts me to start my IPO filing outreach. This is a process that checks recently filed S1s and extracts officers and directors using machine learning. The process begins by asking me to select the date range for the S1s that should be pulled. In this example, the robot works in parallel to me using Picture-in-Picture, Picture, a feature that provides the UiPath Assistant with a perfect copy of my desktop, allowing me to continue my work uninterrupted. While I continue working on my updates, I can watch the attended automation run, or I can minimize it. Once the companies are identified, my UiPath assistant notifies me and gives me options on how I would like to review and connect with prospects. Because I selected manual review, UiPath assistant launches the UiPath validation station, so I can see and confirm the exact entries from the S1. Remember, I may only have one shot at this introduction. In the final step, the process has checked to see if the extracted contacts exist in Salesforce and Marketo and gives me the option to choose who I want to reach out to. It has also created draft emails for me to review and confirm. I can also see the newly created contacts in Salesforce and Marketo. Our automations are industry agnostic. Whether you're automating a process for individual consumption or enterprise-wide usage, UiPath has you covered. Visit us at uipath.com to learn more. Okay, let's take a look at this article from GeekWire. Came out January 11th, 2023. Tech Moves, Microsoft Teams CVP joins the UiPath, Sage Bionetworks names president and more. We're just going to really pay attention to this little piece of news right here graham sheldon former corporate vice president of product for microsoft teams is now chief product officer of uipath an artificial intelligence and automation company uipath is based in new york city and has an office in bellevue washington sheldon spent more than 20 years at microsoft in various roles he began as a product manager and from 2005 2008 served as a technical advisor to Santia Nadella, who was then a senior vice president and is now Microsoft CEO and chairman. Sheldon's other roles at the tech giant included principal lead program manager for Bing and principal engineering manager for Dynamics Applied Research, where he led a team of data scientists and engineers to build predictive systems for business applications. UiPath has also recently promoted. Uh, Manil Shah from Senior Vice President of Engineering to Chief Technology Officer of the Cloud. Shah previously spent 23 years at Microsoft, most recently as Head of Engineering Developer Services in the Azure and AI division. So why I wanted to highlight this uh, piece of news is that UiPath is now employing some very, very strategic pieces coming from Microsoft. And it is, at least in my opinion, a good move. And it allows me to understand what the company is trying to do with these moves. And I, for one, can appreciate uh, the move. It sounds and it reads like they are taking things a little bit more serious. When you pick from teams or when you pick from 
companies such as Microsoft, uh, you really are trying your best to, let's be honest, so you're, you're impressed with that company if you can recruit talent from that company, not to have them doing the same roles, but at least assisting in some of the roles that they were in charge of and perhaps implementing some new technologies that moving forward could be a, of a great benefit. So I think that it's a nice move. I think it's a nice little piece of news. It came out earlier in the month, but uh, we we're almost appro- approaching February. But I just wanted to share this. Let's move on. One. Okay, we are here on full.com. I'm going to take a little quick snippet. We're going to just pay attention right here, this little piece of news that the, Folly, uh, that the Motley Fool is reporting on. Again, I'll leave everything in uh, the show notes. So let's just give a listen. Aggression testing, things that are super exciting in the enterprise space. So to connect actually automations to testing so that you could actually scale automations really fast when things change and allow us to have some significant differentiation with companies. So one of the ways companies test whether something is working or not working is by doing regression test, regression analysis. So UiPath kind of automates those regression tests so that employees don't have to go in there, extract the data, move it over here, conduct the tests, decide what kind of tests to do, and then get insights from those tests, right? That's all time-consuming and repetitive tasks. And so UiPath kind of offers them that kind of uh, a, a test suite. That way companies and enterprises can see what's working, what's not working, what to scale, what to pull back on, what to change. And this is all informative and this all helps businesses focus on what's working, growing, reducing costs, increasing sales, all of those things that enterprises would really like to do more of, right? So the Robert Enslin, the co-CEO, says that we see a TAM, which stands for Total Addressable Market, or traditional TAM market, which we actually defined as roughly a $93 billion opportunity. So this is a growing market opportunity. This is uh, what they have identified as what they can achieve, right? What they feel that enterprises and institutions would be willing to spend on this type of platform, right? Because this is what they can save companies. And so they feel like this. I really think, you know, I don't mean to obviously cut them off. I mean, I just wanted to extract that piece of information that the co-CEO, Robert Insulin, sees this market share, this opportunity as a $93 billion opportunity. And and he actually goes on. Uh, Gardner, I believe, uh, from the Motley Fool has models that uh, come up with anything between, I would say, a couple of hundred billion. But we see the opportunity is significant. And that's where uh, you want to actually be a part of. So let's move on is what companies would be willing to spend but keep in mind that this is a growing opportunity this is not static right there's continuing to be new use cases that's continuing to increase this opportunity okay let's take a look at this article from the motley fool one green flag for uipath stock in 2023 and one red flag let's go into the flags green flag the long-term growth narrative is strengthening I'm not going to go through the entire article, but let's just get down to it. UiPath signs contracts with its customers, which gives its recurring revenue another visibility benefit for long-term investors. In Q3, the company generated revenue of $263 million, up a respectable 19% year over year. But annualized recurring revenue was up a much better 36% to over $1.1 billion, which suggests the future is brighter than the present. Second, contracts are getting longer. UiPath provides investors with information regarding its remaining performance obligations, RPOs. Revenue under contract yet to be recognized. At the end of fiscal 2022, its RPO was at $683 million, and 62% was expected to be recognized within one year. At the end of Q3, UiPath's RPO was at $759 million, up 7% quarter over quarter and only 58% was expected within one year. In other words, tens of millions of dollars of contracted revenue has shifted to further out 
than one year, giving shareholders a measure of confidence that the long-term narrative is strengthening. So those are, I guess, the two flags, right, with those RPOs. And so a lot of the money hasn't been, or the the profits haven't been uh, realized. Uh, Let's show the one red flag. Show me the money. Despite strong top-line growth, UI path has cash flow problems. Through the first three quarters of its fiscal 2023, the company's operative activities have burned through $104 million. For perspective, it's only generating $750 million in revenue during this time. Moreover, the stock-based compensation shares given to employees, which registers as a non-cash charge, is extremely high for UiPath at $271 million in fiscal 2023 so far. It doesn't contribute to the company's cash burn, but it is a drag on shareholder value at the same time. And lastly, this article, and I'll leave it in the show notes, is UiPath overcoming its red flag. Smart investors understand that profitability is a nuanced subject. Cash burning companies don't make good investments unless they can eventually become cash generative. And companies frequently forego profits now if it means growing the business to capture higher profits later. The trick is distinguishing the good business from the pretenders. In UI's path, it's hard to know what its future cash flow situation will look like. That said, there are some notable recent improvements. First, in the first three quarters of its fiscal 2023, UI's past revenue was up 24%. However, total operating expenses were down less than 1% during this time. This suggests management is controlling costs better recently. Moreover, stock-based compensation is high. However, through the first three quarters of fiscal 23, it was down 30% year over year. And that's also trending in the right direction. So, um, you know, in my opinion, the green flags outweigh the red flags. And that's definitely uh, something to pay attention to. So let's jump into the charts. Okay, we are here on my trading view, taking a look at the UI path chart. And I am bringing it out from November of 2022, taking a look here at its uh, most recent earnings uh, in December of 2022. And uh, there was a surprise, uh, was an increase, or I believe the revenue increase. The surprise was 5.2%. And we won't get too much into the financials. We can perhaps do that at another at another date. But I like to look at some technicals. And it's uh, as of this past week, uh, going into this coming week um, on trading, uh, it sits at around 1527. And all I want to do, and I, I looked at uh, the, the Fibonacci retracement. It's just, it's just so low right now. Uh, from the from the most recent swing up to the swing down, this is like below any of the lower Fibonacci levels. So I'm just going to um, uh, play around with just the just some levels of support around the eleven ten dollar mark. Uh, you know, you could even say right right around here. Uh, let me back up. Um, let me do that one now that and let me stop this come up here a little bit let me crunch this down so um, between the high tens and the i guess the low the high 11s anywhere between 10 to 10 to 12 dollars you see some levels of support so i'll make another trend line here that i see from that level to that level, perhaps. Then we'll do another one. Let me do another trend line. Uh, let me come up here. Let me stop here first real quick. And then let me start again. Trend line it up. And from around, yeah, we got, I want to say like around the, the, around the November area. And it's a funky little channel. Um, but... For me, at least, it it's going to play a part here. Now, I could I could move this up here and take out that level of support around the low 11s, and but you know let's just let's just move on. So we have this channel and get back into my hypothetical brush, and if it can find and if it can trade in this channel, and if it can find some support along. Uh, the uh, this channel right here, I think that we could see perhaps a move again 
to the downside and anything can happen. This is not financial advice, but I do like to play what ifs, you know, and if it can stay in this channel and currently where it's sitting at, get back into my brush and delete that. And if it, let's say it stays on top of this channel, right? Delete that and get back into my brush. If it turns this trend line, and if it just bounces out, let's say, you know, whatever it does, it's, it's in this channel, then it, it finds a new level of support. Then I would be very interested to check to see and find some new levels of resistance. As of now, I'm looking at its current levels, and if it touches $16, $17, and it shoots back down into this channel down here, like in the mid-teens, um, I wouldn't be surprised. Anything can happen, right? And, and if it were to sink below that, this little channel that I have it in, then yeah, you know, anything can happen. But I do like the setup for these levels of support. If they are ascending and they do shoot up and they do tend to sh bounce in this little channel that I've made, um, but it's not the, like I made this channel. It's like this channel is here. I'm just choosing to go with it and again it's such a low level from where it was currently trading at you know it was trading up here uh in, in the high 20s and in the, in the low 30s and way up here in the 40s right so i'm trying to play a little bit more of a game that is realistic to where it's currently at which is way down here and that's okay you know uh i definitely see this type of company uh, being needed in the future. And so for me, I guess it, it is in one of Madeline's portfolios. It's in her, one of her ARK ETFs. And I believe it's in more than one, but it's at least in the next generation internet ETF. So I just um, thought that, you know, let me remove all drawings. I really did like this little channel that it's currently in from its most recent earnings report. And if we can stay in that channel, cool. And if it does anything, I wouldn't be surprised if it just shoots up or if it drops all the way back down and, and retest this kind of like high 10s, low 11 uh, area. And with everything going on in the market right now, I'm not surprised with anything. Um, Madeline and Penelope are both uh, in it for the long run. So we'll see what happens, but that's my chart. Okay, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for your time. I greatly appreciate it. Please continue to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, drop me a comment if there's another company, ETF, IPO, cryptocurrency, or piece of artwork that you would like for me to research. Just go ahead and uh, leave it in the comment section. I'll get to it as soon as I can. Until the next time, I really do, again, I do appreciate it. Y'all have a great week. Y'all take care.